Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. I'm joined by Paul Strome and Nicole Dines. And of course, in the past seven days, we saw London lose its position as most valuable European stock exchange to Paris. And of course, that's a huge reversal of fortunes for the London Stock Exchange, which was worth about 1.4 trillion more than its Parisian rival back in 2016. Um, so big changes there. And interesting as well that there's now beginning to be, for the first time, press commentary about the sort of economic downside of Brexit. So interesting to see how that will begin to, to move through in terms of the press over the next few weeks and months here in the UK. Um, Nicole, what have you been watching? Well, Real Asset Media and Garbe uh, in, had an investment briefing this week on the prospects for the Netherlands, and it focused in particular on, on two sectors. One is on logistics, which will continue to outperform despite the economic slowdown. Uh, Marit Smit of Garbe said that the sector has strong fundamentals, and obviously the Netherlands is particularly privileged because of its geographical location, uh, because of its great infrastructure network, and also the basic thing is the strong demand that continues to grow and very limited supply and a very limited pipeline. So there's not much supply coming. And obviously the sector has been helped by, like in other European countries, by the reshoring trend. And uh, Rene Buck of BCI Global said that during the pandemic, with the exponential growth of e-commerce, many companies reconfigurated their portfolios and sort of jumped on the logistics bandwagon. But now with the economic slowdown, they're, they're sort of rethinking. So some assets might come on the market. And he said that gives a great opportunity for the longstanding real specialists like Garbe to exploit these opportunities and, 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 and do really well. So it's time for the sort of specialists to come back. And the other sector that they focus focused on has been a really growth sector is science parks, which we've mentioned many times. But in the Netherlands, there are about 35 science parks, some of it already developed, some of them as at the ideas or pro project stage. But René Bach again said there's no risk of oversupply at all because demand is so high. And the problem in the Netherlands, unlike the US, there are very few specialist developers. So the real estate sector really needs to provide these very special buildings that the you know, labs, uh, wet labs and so on, that the science parks sector sector needs so that's uh, that presents a, a, a great opportunity and uh, in the Netherlands there's a strong ecosystem already uh, because of the strong universities that are there because of these 35 parks as I said they're in development and that's really been boosted recently by the transfer of uh, the European's medicines agency from uh, London to Amsterdam after Brexit so that's given an added incentive to boost in the sector the only downside I mean relative downside the, the expert said was that it's a very unpredictable sector. You know, success can be a long time coming and then can be absolutely spectacular. And these companies say, OK, we might need space for one person. We might need space for 250 people or 400 if, if uh, you know, whatever, if they have a technological breakthrough or if one of their medicines or development you know, comes through. So it's a, it's a very unpredictable sector. So it, it really needs not only specialized space, but also very flexible and adaptable space. And the other Thing I think we should mention this week is that COP27, of course, in Egypt has come to an end. Whatever the details of, of the last minute negotiations might be, um, I think it's fair to say that the real estate sector, the built environment really took, you know, did not, was not centre stage at all. I like in Glasgow, of course, which being a city really underlined that, that aspect of, you know, building resilient cities and improving the built environment. Uh, for understandable reasons, Egypt from the very beginning was always more focused on, uh, on historical wrongs, on, uh, you know, on, on, on countries that um, are suffering because of the consequences of, of uh, you know, pollution that did not contribute to. So the focus was very much on that and not on the built environment. So I think, um, yes, it's something to definitely to keep in mind for the next COP, for COP28, uh, maybe real estate industry should, should really have a, more of a seat at the table. Yeah, it was really interesting. I think that that uh, discussion around lo logistics and and science parks as well as the residential and and Paul there was quite a focus in our news line as well in terms of the the sort of science and technology park side yes that's right um uh, Oxford properties group and, and French developer Novaxia have completed their joint acquisition of the biocitec life sciences campus in Paris that's a 21,000 square meter project, and it's located in the Romain V submarket of Paris, it comprises seven buildings, uh, providing a mix of labs, offices, and uh, specialist storage. Uh, it's the partnership's first acquisition since May when it announced plans to invest approximately 1 billion buying and developing life sciences buildings across France. 
And then in London, Cadence Science Partner and, and Canary Wharf Group are going to develop an innovation facility at uh, London's Canary Wharf. That's going to provide fully fitted laboratories and amenities for developing life science companies. And it's in addition to the plans for a health and life science focus building, uh, which they're, they're um, developing on the 3.38 hectare North Quay at Canary Wharf. That facility is expected to be ready in 2026. You may also remember that earlier this year, Genomics England announced it'll move into um, an 18,000 square foot space at One Canada Square this autumn. The latest project will convert two floors of offices, totaling about 38,000 square feet, at 20 Water Street in Canary Wharf, and that into fully flexible wet labs and office accommodation. Um, and that'll be ready in, uh, in next May. Also in London, uh, at King's Cross, a new bioscience innovation centre will be included in the Tribeca development there. Uh, Tribeca is to be a mix of workspace, laboratories and residential units in five buildings. And it's being developed by um, mixed use regeneration specialist uh, reef group, BlackRock Alternatives. It's a letting story, really. It's founded in 2000. London Bioscience Innovation Centre is a wholly owned uh, company of the Royal Veterinary College, and it'll occupy 37,000 square feet of an 86,000 square foot building known as the Apex, uh, which is also scheduled for completion next year. And, and, and Tribeca will be a key part of the King's Cross Knowledge Quarter. And uh, also there, there have been other interesting non-conventional investment stories around too. I was interested to see that the German investment manager Patrizia is making a big commitment to Japanese residential property. Patricia has formed a partnership with a, so far, unnamed major in Asian institutional investor to invest up to uh, 150 billion yen, that's about 1 billion euros, in Japanese residential real estate. Patricia and the institution will co-invest by a, a dedicated Singapore domiciled fund, which might suggest that the mystery in, investor is Singaporean too. The fund will target residential assets in Tokyo and other major cities and metropolitan areas across, across Japan. Patrizia appointed Katsumi Nakamoto as the president of its Japan operation just over a year ago, since when the Japanese office has grown to more than 10 full-time employees. The firm says that the attractions of Japan are a low interest rate, low inflation environment, which means financing and development opportunities are attractive for investors. And it points out that the country's economy has experienced robust post-pandemic recovery. Lastly, um, a retail story as we warm up for MAPIC at the end of this month. Canadian outdoor retail brand Macarge has opened its first store in Europe at Dusseldorf Shopping Centre Sevens. Macarge specialises in high quality outerwear made from leather, down and wool and is also planning to open a second shop in Europe shortly in Paris. CBR Investment Management has been repositioning the Sevens Centre for the last year. Upper floors of the uh, building are being converted to offices and the retail ground first and second floor are being refurbished. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I did a um, an, an interview with uh, Eric de Cuvillere of CBRE Investment Management, and I'll be able to pick up some of that next week in Realcast. I, I noticed as well on the sustainability side that Westminster City Council um, launched a new sustainable city charter. So that's creating a sort of new framework to decarbonize the built environment and focusing on operational rather than embodied carbon. Um, but we, you know, we can expect to see a number of, uh, I think, cities doing similar things, you know, post COP27, as you mentioned, there, Nicole. I also saw, um, you know, we, we mentioned CBRE announcing sort of job cuts amid the economic downturn from their US head office. And interesting to note, JLL doing the same this week. Uh, I also saw MSCI expanding its uh, data service to cover the Norwegian market. And lastly, looking at the media, I was interested to see Dutch um, FD Media Group acquiring IPE. And FD, of course, the dominant daily newspaper in the financial markets for Holland. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the Week in Real Assets. Mm -hmm.